Hey guys, Tony here, and in this video, we're going to take a look at what could be the most affordable 4K laser projector on the market with the Caceres A6. I will have links in the description for this, as well as the other models available as well. There is a special price at the moment before the end of the year coming in at $22.99 US, and a bundle with an ALR screen is $25.98, and can be purchased from Amazon US and Australia as well. So taking a look at the projector, it's a decent size for a UST, not too big or heavy, and finished in a silver metallic plastic, vents on the sides with a pattern on the front which would allow sound to pass through it. The back I.O. panel is fairly standard with two HDMI ports and the first one having ARC and CEC support, a single USB type A port as well as an optical out. In the box you get a power adapter suitable for your country, a nice tactile remote with responsive buttons, however no backlighting, an instruction booklet and a Hakko Android TV dongle which was super easy to set up. I used the USB A port on the back to power it and it booted up nice and quickly. It is compact and does everything you would expect from an Android TV streaming box, actually licensed for Netflix and other streaming services, which is a big plus. I personally would not be using this on the daily as I have an Apple TV and a Zidu Z9X player, however if you're on a budget or don't have a streaming box, having one provided is a nice touch. Specs wise, this projector has a pixel shifting true 4K DLP display, not to be confused with native 4K or UHD, although this is one of the sharpest representations I've seen on an ultra short throw as the technology has been improved over time. It is a triple laser projector, meaning it doesn't have a color wheel to make the individual colors, and it does produce a very vivid and vibrant display. It has a DLP using a 0.47 DMD, although I didn't see any rainbow effect, which I usually do see with single laser projectors. Light output is decently bright, producing 2200 NC lumens, making daytime viewing a definite possibility, rated at 30,000 hours of use, and with a throw ratio of 0.233 to 1, it can make an image 80 to 120 inches, although for that the projector would need to be placed near the floor. My screen is the 100 inch Elite Screens Aeon CLR Pro, which is specifically designed to reflect light coming from below, so it really does help with black levels during daylight. As this projector is intended for a home cinema use, I have placed it in a home theater setting with a multi-channel speaker setup. However, there are two onboard 10 watt speakers and the projector can support Dolby and DTS, although to get the most out of this projector, I recommend pairing it with a speaker setup. The operating system is an Android TV OS, which I've seen on several projectors that I won't name here, not to be confused with Android TV that you get on a streaming box, hence why there is a Hakko streaming box provided. This projector also supports 4K 60Hz as well, and it automatically switches to 4K 24, making it perfect for movies which are usually shot in 24fps. There is also MEMC, which I like to have on low, so as not to have too much smoothing, but turning it off for gaming mode, which is reported at 30 milliseconds lag, making it acceptable for the type of gaming that my kids like to do. Installation was very easy, and there are a few things to take note of here which I have not seen on many UST projectors, and that is the feet at the front are recessed, which allows you to pull the projector forward, more than you would if the feet were flush with the front. Pair this with four adjustable feet, and you can get pretty spot on with your alignment. As I always say, avoid keystoning at all costs, as it does affect the image as well as the performance, but there are a few options to make small adjustments if you need to, and as the throw ratio on this projector is the same as my other UST projector, I did not have to keystone the image and was able to line it up to the corners with ease. The projector powers up very quickly and comes straight up to the last HDMI input that was selected, and my first impression is how punchy and responsive the menu system is. Combined with an easy to use remote, it made a far less tedious experience when I was calibrating the colors. While there are a few presets for image brightness and color temperature, one of the standout features of this projector, especially at this price point, is that you get full control over the color temperature as well as the colors. For someone like me who takes image quality pretty seriously and has invested in a calibration sensor, this is a huge plus. 
I use the Color Checker Plus combined with the free software HCFR. I'll leave links to both of these in the description. And I was able to spend quite a bit of time tinkering with the image until I got both the white point corrected as well as the colors as best I could. Being that this is a triple laser projector that supports up to BT2020 color space, my single favorite feature of this projector is that it has the calibration options built right in for both color temperature and the primary and secondary colors. Now results for the BT2020 were not ideal. I had a lot of trouble getting the colors very accurate at all. Even boosting to max would not get me close to the target, which is not unexpected. However, for the color temperature, I came up almost perfect to 90% using a technique that my friend Leo showed me. This doesn't mean that it doesn't make a great image. I just had a very difficult time hitting the targets for red and blue, which isn't unusual for BT2020. So what I did was switch to Rec 709 and I got pretty decent results aiming for 60% of the colors, which does translate well for BT2020 as you can see from the demos. I spent two days tinkering with the calibration in various lighting conditions. Once the color temperature was corrected, it brought back a lot of detail in the dark areas and I found that it was quite a vivid image during movies which are overly dark and high contrast like the Batman and also Top Gun Maverick. This projector can be used during the day if you have a screen like mine, however it really shines at night when there is little or no light. There is a lot of brightness which does come through once you have the image calibrated. I didn't mind the presets, but if you calibrate for your room and the lighting conditions using a sensor, you will get the best results. My daughter really likes to game on this setup. She really likes Fortnite and she told me that this is the best projector that she's used so far and the input lag didn't seem to be an issue for her while playing. I wouldn't expressly say that this is a great projector for gaming. It's suitable for casual gaming, but where it does shine is during movie playback. So looking at the pros first, we have a great value projector for triple laser at $22.99 of which I haven't seen anything come close to that price which supports the triple laser. Triple laser gives much more vivid colors than a standard laser projector, pretty much on par with a good lamp projector. I also like that there are four adjustable feet and the front two are in a little so that you can pull the projector forward yet it won't tip off the edge. The biggest pro for me is the calibration control and while I wasn't able to get all the targets for BT2020, I was able to correct the color temperature, which is in my opinion the most important as you get your white point correct and fix any overbalance of red, green and blue within your grayscale image. Another standout feature for me is the image quality. It's very vibrant, sharp and colorful. And that to me makes this one of the best projectors that I've tested in all lighting conditions and one I would certainly be happy to keep in my setup. Now to the cons. First one is the color. Using silver for the chassis is both reflective and it does stand out even in the dark. While it's a nice design, in the dark I can see it and that to me isn't as good as if it was black. Although after a bit of watching, I didn't notice it. Marketed as a theatre projector, I would have liked to see it in black, but it doesn't affect the performance. Another issue I had was trying to get CEC to work, although it was plugged into the correct port, it may just need some other kind of adjustment that I couldn't find in the settings. Another con for me is that it does produce a little bit of noise when at max brightness. This isn't really a huge issue as I sit around 4 meters away, but in quiet scenes you can hear it, although it's not obnoxiously loud. Overall, I think this projector presents great value at $22.99 or bundled together with their ALR screen at $25.98. You can check the links in the description if you want to buy one. I'd like to thank Asiris for sending this in for review. I have thoroughly enjoyed my time with it so far and plan on watching a few more movies later this week. So thanks to everyone for watching. But that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.